Hi everyone, it's me again. Um, on my last video about the Shadow 2 Compact, comparing the Compact to the full size, there was a question that seems to be a very common question out there whenever we're talking about carrying guns. And the question seems to go around the fact that the Shadow 2, the Shadow 2 Compact, those guns don't have a firing pin block and therefore um, they wouldn't be drop safe. And then the question is whether or not it's safe to carry those guns. Quick disclosure before we move on. I have no association whatsoever with any firearms manufacturer. Everything you're going to hear me saying here in this video is my opinion. It's not for you to take as any form of endorsement. And you're liable 100% with what you're going to do with the information that you're going to have here today. Having said that, let's move on. So the theory is that because the gun doesn't have a fire pin block, if the gun falls down and the hammer is decocked and hits the ground directly, you would transfer enough energy there will be enough force there to transfer enough energy from the hammer to the firing pin and the firing pin would then hit the primer with enough force to ignite it and the gun would go bang, even with nobody pulling the trigger. So that's what the problem is. So to simulate this situation here in my shop and test it out, what I'm going to do is load the gun with uh, this, I'm not going to call it a blank round because it isn't even a blank round, it's like an incomplete bullet, let's call it this way. It's a case and a primer. It's a life primer and in a case that's all no powder no projectile so this is not gonna do any damage harm anything if it if it ignites um, I'm using the softest primer we have available in the market here in the US federal primers uh, competitive shooters know this well this is the softest primer out there if during the test um, this does not ignite um, I'm gonna say that it wouldn't ignite with any other primer not at least not what we have available in the US market um, what I'm going to do is then load the gun with that, put the gun in the vise, decock the hammer, and I'm going to heat the hammer um, hard enough to produce enough force, which I believe would be the same force of a gun falling down and, hitting the and having the hammer hitting the ground directly. And then we're going to check if, if, if it ignites, obviously, it's proved that it, no, it's not safe. If it doesn't ignite, we can get the case out and check the primer to see if there was even any contact with the primer. I'm going to consider this safe if there wasn't any kind of contact with the primer whatsoever. Like if this primer is still like it is right now, there's nothing on it, no prime, no fine paint ever touched this primer, then I'm going to call it safe. So let's do it. All right, got the Shadow 2 Compact out of the box, one of the rounds, one of the cases uh, loaded with that primer is in the chamber right now so i would consider this gun a loaded gun at this point although nothing's going to come out of it it is loaded i'm going to get my hammer down and go to the vise all right let's get the gun fixed in the vise here hammer is decocked and we're going to do some hammering here see what can we start with i'm gonna get one of those uh, gunsmith hammer now i'm gonna hit with the polymer side and i know there's some some of the energy is going to be absorbed by that it's not the same as a hitting the hammer with something hard um but hopefully i'll hit with enough force that i would think it's simulating the gun falling down from the height of someone holding it at least um and hit the ground directly on the hammer so before we do, before we continue, I do have safety glasses. I don't think I need gloves for this, but let's see what happens. All right, that isn't enough. Nothing went bang. I'm gonna use a sledgehammer. I'm not gonna hit this directly because it's gonna scratch the gun, but I don't want to do that. But I'm gonna put the wood here and hopefully this is gonna be enough force. Now, it did not ignite, but let's see if there was any any type of contact between the fine pin and the and the primer. So, gun is unloaded again. That's the primer here. There is nothing on it. This primer was not touched. The fine pin never got any close to it. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this fine pin 
This is the OEM firing pin. We just got this gun out of the box. I'm going to replace this firing pin by one of the aftermarket extended firing pins and relieved springs. Let's see what happened. Okay, so I got it loaded with that that case with the light primer again, replaced the firing pin by an extended firing pin and reduced firing pin spring that normally comes as a pair. And I'm gonna put the gun again in the vise. And we're gonna heat that hammer again and see what happens this time. Got my safety glasses. So let's see if we can reproduce that. this here again all right so it looks like it did not go bad did not ignite right so take this off so you can hear my voice well now let's see if the primer is if anything happens to the primer oh oh no now take my safety glass off the firing pin actually hit the primer. It actually did. So, no, I would not consider this drop safe if you're using an extended firing pin. So for me, that's one more reason why, being my carry gun, I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't do any upgrade to it. So I would definitely not have an extended firing pin on my carry gun. So this is it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope this is useful information for you out there. I'll see you next time.